So I told them I want to study. Mm -hmm. So I met with uh, um, I met with a very good real ambassador. Mm -hmm. They said, uh, go and make your go and calculate how much every time it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So I calculated. That's now the a person you met in, in the that Netherlands. Netherlands yeah, in the Netherlands, mm. yeah. Actually, he was also one of the people that pushed for me to come. Mm. So I went for that conference mm. as a TV presenter, mm. stroke PA educator, mm -hmm. and also a world starts with me, alumni. Oh, so multiple. Yeah, so I even gave them the idea that mm. I would love to start up a movement of alumni mm. that can come together and mm. we have an organization mm. that can be able to spread. Mm. Yeah, to spread and also empower mm. the young people mm. in different communities mm. and schools. Yeah. So when I, when I gave them that <coughs> idea, already I said I have one, I have the Rural Youth Voice Project that we can use mm. as one of the examples to reach out to the young people. Mm. They're like, oh yes, that's brilliant. Mm. So when I was talking to them about my schools, they're like, okay, we shall support your school, but we're not going to support your organization. Mm. I'm like, that's fine enough. I, went, I came back home. My brother is so pissed. Why and whatever? I'm like, I have seen where the future is. <coughs> you get it. I want to continue with my TV business. They are trying to put me in their shop to work. I said mm -hmm. I'm not working in a shop. Mm -hmm. My vision is different. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've even got a scholarship to mm -hmm. go and study. Mm -hmm. So let me what? Mm -hmm. Study. Mm -hmm. So I joined uh, Macquarie University. I study first year. Things are okay. Mm -hmm. So in my first year, first semester. That's how now I introduced this organization to the young people. Mm. Because in psychology, we are learning about um, issues around sexuality. Uh, we're talking about communi communication skills. We're talking about drugs, abuse, and whatever. That was our first semester, mm. you know, curriculum that we are studying. Mm. I'm like, let's convert this into outreach knowledge to the young people. Mm. You get, let's start becoming psychologists right now in schools. Mm. Not that everyone joined. Of course, others say this guy is a Mia is on TV, just wants to use us. Mm. Because we Ugandans have that thing of they're mm. going to use us, they're yeah. going to use us, mm. everything they're going to use us. Mm. But you're not seeing even the opportunity that is in, in it, mm. for example. Mm. And also working on TV, I know that if I go to schools, I'll go with the TV yeah. backing me. Yeah. I have these celebrities we are hosting on TV, I'm mm. going to talk to them and I go with them mm. so that it can attract a lot of, sh like, a cap like a capital movement. Mm. So, then I call my friends, you mm -hmm. know, I'm like, hey guys, that's how I even reach out to the Bakshis mm -hmm. and whatever. I'm mm -hmm. like, there's something new I'm starting up, mm -hmm. so please, if you want to join me now, those mm -hmm. are the alumni of what's with me, mm -hmm. come and what? Mm -hmm. And join me, mm -hmm. you get it. Mm -hmm. And those who are willing to volunteer, mm -hmm. volunteer, but the bigger picture is ahead. Because mm -hmm. well, as I see myself, if at, I'm at campus after three years, where am I going to be? Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm. Yes, they're providing for me. Mm. Yeah, I've got a scholarship. But after three years, what am I going to repay back mm. of the energy that yep. everyone has put in? Yeah. So 2010, we create strategies. I started having meetings. I'd call people mm. in a bar and whatever. Mm. And mm -hmm. because of the networks mm. and because I started way back, mm. most of the people that I even used to work with those days, mm. they had bigger jobs. Mm. They had, yeah, you know, they true. were working in different whatever. So I mm. had that capital mm. that I would bank on. Mm. And now I started school programs. Mm -hmm. And my school programs, even before, in my in my vacation with the TV, mm. we used to take musicians to schools. Mm. You know, like these things mm -hmm. of people paying on the door. I yeah. used to do that. Mm. You get it, mm. DJs and whatever, mm. I used to do that. Mm. Now I'll be the MC stroke P educator. Mm. And for me, that was my outreach I was selling. Yeah. Now I'm like, I want you to come with me. I don't want you to sing. Mm. I want you to share your story with mm. them mm -hmm. on what has made you a purposeful musician today. Mm. Mm. I want you to share the story with you, with us, on what has made you the greatest TV presenter today. Mm. Mm. I want you to share a story on what has made you a businessman. So it was more empowerment in mm. career, empowerment in mm. uh, young people achieving their dreams mm -hmm. and also start setting their goals. Mm. So it was amazing. You get it? So now, if uh, when I went to school, the schools that I booked, mm -hmm. I'll say, I'm coming with my people. Yeah. Make sure we have lunch. Mm. We have some car transport. It's mm. okay. Mm. If you appreciate what we have done, mm. you appreciate mm. the, in a good way so mm. that I can, you know, mm. transport these people back because mm. I'm using my money. Mm. And I started with 40,000 shillings. Mm. That's about like, let's say, three, three. Like, like about uh, like about six dollars. Mm. That 40,000 shillings mm. fueled the car of my friend. You get it? 
uh, it pay it bought uh, it uh, it bought some book, flip charts and material. Mm. It paid one musician twenty thousand. Mm. Hmm. Forty thousand that started that preacher. Wow. The name Richard had where I get it from now. Mm -hmm. I'm discussing with my sister. Mm -hmm. So when I'm discussing with my sister, I tell her I'm like, um, I, I wanted to buy like a, a laptop, a Mac laptop, because I saw these guys who are editing and having it, because I wanted to learn video mm -hmm. editing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how much is a Mac laptop? Mm -hmm. It was about like six million. Mm -hmm. It's like, you see that six million? You want me to get six million to buy you a Mac laptop? I'm free. Because you've seen people, rich kids, having those laptops. So that's what also you want. Mm. It's like until your hand reaches what you can touch, mm. you will buy yourself a Mac what? Laptop. Wow. You get it? Mm. So I realized how many young people mm. live a life in pretense that they haven't reached. How many young people want to drive that Land Rover or Range Rover at the age they are on, not knowing how many years it has taken someone to mm. ride that French road. Mm. How many young people cannot live a sustainable life mm. because they want quick gains? Yeah. Now I want to change the mindset of mm. people to be hard workers to do. And that's how Richard Hand mm. as a name mm. started. Mm -hmm. When I started up Richard Hand, I had an idea of a foundation. Mm -hmm. A foundation that can lobby and be able to support other organizations. Okay. So when I was also discussing it to some of my mentors, like a foundation is for rich people. Mm -hmm. You're not rich. Mm. It's for philanthropists who give money. But yeah. You know that. Yeah. It you is. need so the money. Don't call it richer hand foundation. Mm. Let it be richer hand mm. as richer hand. Mm. I had a dream of going global. Mm -hmm. That's why in our hand is a globe. Mm. You get it. Yeah. I'm like, maybe I would love Richard and Kenya, mm. I would love Richard and Rwanda, mm. whatever, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I, the hand, so mm. you have a hand and mm. the globe that you're mm -hmm. reaching out to several young people. Mm. So that's how the globe come. Mm. You get, and this okay. is more of an ideation mm. process. Mm. As I speak right now, we're registered in the UK, we're registered in the US. Mm. So we're going global. Yeah. And the dream has taken us 12 years to realize. Yeah. So that's the kind of dream I had. Mm. And so what's happening to voice? Uh, rural rural voice. So voice. Mm. I, I, I nullified it. Mm. And then Richard Hand was given okay. back to that. All right. mm. So when Richard Hand came to play, we started schools. Mm -hmm. Now I would show the outreach programs on TV. Mm -hmm. And already I had fans. I had people that were watching. So I started inviting them to join me at the outreach. That's clever. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm. So everyone would get there. Me, I would say the meeting point is yeah. Mariam High. And that's it. And that's it. Mm. And they would come. Mm. So when they come, we sit down and orient them. Or everyone, yeah. I give them a topic on what you're going to talk about. Mm. They go into classes. Mm. So that's how I started gathering my peer educators. So it's, and which is an interesting thing because you are um, decentering the power. Yeah. You know, you're making sure that it's a movement. It's people who are owning and driving it and driving more than it. yourself. More yeah. than myself. Mm. So all I would say, I'll have a uh, race signature, I'll have tonics, mm. I'll have mm. Rachel. Mm. K, I'll have Mackenzie. Those mm. were like celebrities those days. Mm. If you want to meet them, find mm. us at this school. Mm. Ah, yeah, yeah. They would come. Everyone would come in yeah. numbers, yeah. So then later, I now started approaching big guys mm. in, in private sector, mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, politicians, mm. or whatever. Mm. And the trick I would use is not that the kids wanted them, mm -hmm. but we wanted to create a need that they want them. Mm. So I'm like, Maxi, uh, my name's I'm Humphrey, I work with NBS TV, yes. Oh yeah, you NBS, by the way, it's growing. Mm. I can see you people uh, changing the discourse of this TV industry. Oh, mm. okay. Mm. So what are you saying, my son? Mm. Uh, you know, sir, I've been to about several schools, but all those people, like every school I've been to, at least five of them have been asking if you could go and talk to the kids. They love your story. They love how far you've made it, but they mm. want to know you. They want to be empowered by you. Mm. Are you for real? I'm like, yes. Okay, so when is the next one? This Saturday, sir. Uh, you come. Uh, can you change the schedule for me on Saturday? Maybe I can be with this young man. Mm. Trust me, he's going to drive his very nice car. Mm. To get somewhere into To get into the, and he'll come to the school. Mm. And I'll tell the students, if this man comes, we stand up, we shout, we... You get it? Mm. 
you get, and they would, they would make them feel special, special and, and needed and needed and when they talk also they talk a lot of empowerment mm. Mm. but even now, now you start now going to corporate companies you see i'm mm. in maxis the mm. private sector of this place mm. now even you i come like sir mm. you know running our programs but mm. any sponsorship your mm. company can give us mm. no no no. you know what you can be using my sound system is in the store that's yeah. what i can provide yeah yeah so, so megaphones we, yeah. so like now human capital, capital. investments are yeah, exactly. coming in mm. You get ah no, I have a bus. My school, my my university has a bus. Mm. You can be using it to take your what? Over the your entrance, people yeah. because I saw your mm. movie there. But make sure you brand me. Mm. You get it. Mm. That's it. And that's how it started. Mm. Mm. You get so I, I started bringing influential people to talk to the kids. Yeah. You get it, mm. and that's the social capital they will bring was mm. enormous. And you're documenting and it. I'm documenting it. I'm mm. making sure it's on on TV. It's mm. on it's on uh, on social media. Mm. It's everywhere. Mm. Which has started growing. Mm. Now I said up now root gas, mm. uh, which is WPF WPF at that time. At that time yeah. Then it became root gas. Mm -hmm. uh, WPF now it's root gas. Mm. They started now seeing the outreach programs as growing. Mm. So the same people that were, the, so I started using them as consultants mm -hmm. now to shape up our topics, mm. and what and yeah. all that. Yeah. And they're like, no, this man should be part of it. Mm. So in 2013, I get a, an opportunity to go to the US, my mm -hmm. first time, mm. for an HIV conference. Mm. So when I went there, I was trying to get MTV Staying Alive Foundation on mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. I started applying for their funding from 2010 to mm -hmm. 2013. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, Sarah Piot, <coughs> who was the... Who is was now the retiring. Is, is retiring. No, Georgia retired. Oh, no. Georgia retired. Yeah, Sarah Piot, mm -hmm. I don't think she retired. Yeah, it's Georgia who retired. Yeah. So Sarah Piot gave me an appointment mm -hmm. about three days mm -hmm. after the conference. Mm -hmm. Three days after the conference, mm. you don't have a hotel, mm. you don't have, uh, you don't you have, have to anything. figure out how to so figure out anything. Mm. I had to sleep in a shelter, mm. waiting for her for mm. three days. <laughs> when I met her, I told her my condition. She was so like, wow. I think that was my proposal entry. <laughs> I didn't need to write a proposal. Mm. They started funding our work. Mm. We got her ten thousand grant mm. in two thousand and thirteen. Mm. In 2014, because of the track record with root gas and mm -hmm. also being an alumni of World Source with me, mm. we joined uh, the consortium, which was mm. ASK. Yes. And then we started getting funded. Yeah. In 2014, we got mm. more donors on board. Mm. But mm. remember, we have we started working from 2014, mm. investing in ourselves mm. since mm. up mm. to 2000. And you had been doing it before either way. Yes. Mm. 14. Mm. And that's how funding started coming. Mm. Was there, at the time, was there also need for you to start now putting like the organization systems in place and how did you go 2014, about that? that's when mm. we started. Mm. So instead Part of, of lobbying for, for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of lobbying for funding to, to do activities, mm. I would say I need capacity. Yeah. Do you get it? My partnership, my yeah. seeking for partners mm. was more seeking for capacity mm. building. Mm. Build my capacity so that I can mm. do work. Mm. Build my capacity, I mm. do work. Mm. Build my capacity, I do work. Yeah. So our system strengthening started. My first strategic planning meeting I did was in 2012 without funding. It was self-funded. Mm. I brought a consultant. Mm. I brought, uh, gathered in a room. I mm. brought a boardroom. Mm. And we started having a strategic plan because mm. I wanted a business plan as well. Yeah. To start lobbying for funding. Yeah. Yeah. And how did that first one look like and appear? And what did it The guy did a lot of copy and paste. Oh. Mm. Get, gave mm. us a very huge document mm. that even now, like, I'm like, okay. Mm. But I bragged I have a strategic plan. <laughs> yeah. You get it. If you so ask their donor. It was not even practical mm. at mm. all. You get it. But that's how it all started. Mm. It was, it was, it had a starting point. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You get it. And what challenges are you facing at that time? There are a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. No one would see the big picture. Mm. No one would see the vision. Mm. So everyone who would be passionate to work with you, they would drop off. Mm. They would drop off. They would drop off. Yeah. You get it. So at the end of the day, it told me one thing. I had mm. to carry my own cross. Mm. You get it. People, yes, would come with good intentions mm. to support you, mm. to be there. Mm. But if they think quick gains, like things are not coming as early as... Now you're talking know. about staff, for instance. Like not even staff, volunteers, volunteers yeah. everyone, even mm. my colleagues, mm. you know. That mm. were like we shall, your my ride or die. Mm. You get it. So yeah. 
That's how it was. Mm. So when I go, money, of course, my worry was like, if I get money, so how are people going to react? Mm. You get it? But everyone reacted in different ways. Mm. And I used to tell people, even up to now, I still tell them that we are a moving train. Mm. Exactly. You decide to drop off, or the train continues. with us. Mm. And when you drop off, make sure that you drop off well. Mm. Don't jump through the windows and whatever and break your leg. Yeah. You get it? Because mm. there, it might be very hard for you to board that train again. Mm. But if you drop off properly, mm. that train as well, you can find it on another stop and mm. get it. Mm. So that's how Richard Hand has been. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very powerful. since then, of course, we have found so many challenges. Mm. Fundraising is still a challenge. We still look yeah. for money. Mm -hmm. Being a locally led organization, mm. we're always attacked mm. by opposition. Yeah. You get it. And they don't understand that we are a grassroots mm. led organization. Mm -hmm. Founded, started from here. Mm. It's a social enterprise that you're running. It's mm. an agency as well that you're running. Mm. We create all whatever we're creating mm. to empower. Mm. We started up the Peer Educators Academy in 2014. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm. But brought back all the alumni to now professionally train them mm. because we didn't have a professional training program. Mm. But the Peer Educators Academy has given birth to so many professionals. Yeah. You know, it has given opportunity to so many mm. young people. Mm. You get it. They mm. are now even there. Some of most of them are even core staff mm. of Richard Hunt. Mm. Bob mm. was a peer educator. Mm. You get it. So, yeah. and now he's a staff of Richard mm. Hunt. Mm. We have very many peer educators now that are working with NBS TV, mm. where I used mm. to work. Yeah. You know, every time they keep taking up mm. more and more mm. and more. And mm. those are opportunities we're So, getting. you're producing. You're producing people for the market as for well. For the market, yeah. yes. And and they are in now, if you go to Sehat, mm. you know about Anne yeah. Kuku is our yeah. peer educator, yeah. you know, mm. but mm. the platform mm. for, for here. Mm. And also that's something I started telling people I appreciate. Mm. NBS gave me a platform mm. and it gave birth to Richard Hart. Mm. Mm. And I utilized the platform True. so well without mm. looking at how much I might get. Yeah. Let's look at a bit about the fact that you're working in traditionally taboo topics. Mm -hmm. Sexually reproductive health um, is, is, I think, in Uganda, one of the most diciest. Yeah. How, in your journey, um, you've observed the moments in this movement. Which ones have been very pivotal, and where, where are you, and where are you placed in that story? Either as Humphrey or as Richard Hand? As Humphrey, I remember in 2015, my workmates called me, no, 2013, my workmates called me gay. Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to go on national television and say I hate gays. If, I, if you're not gay, you go on national television and say you hate gays. Mm. There are people, I think that time people were producing the show, where we had uh, guys from Netherlands mm -hmm. wanted to do an interview on me, mm -hmm. on how I'm doing uh, influencing, like talking to young people about sexuality yeah. issues on TV mm -hmm. and how I do my show. So mm -hmm. I had to request them to come in studio, mm -hmm. record me and I'm doing the show. Mm -hmm. And then these guys like forged stories mm. of like, hey, even those bazungos were, they were busy like, you know, soft touching guys. And it's like I was doing a recruitment. You get mm. it? Mm. Of young people into homosexuality. Mm. And uh, at that time, that's when we have that pastor, whereby he was interrogated on TV mm. with, uh, with Pepe. You are gay. Uh, that he had mm. something like that. Mm. And then he started giving stories. You see, mm. they get these boys. They're always in influential places. Mm. They're always on the plane traveling mm. and whatever. So he narrated the story, and it seems so true because Humphrey was traveling, was going to Indonesia, was mm. going to USA, mm. was going to South Africa. Mm. So they're like, you see, even this Humphrey man, he's get. You see, he never complains mm. that he's broke. Mm. You get it? Because I knew my hustle. Mm. He never come. He has girls, but we have not had that. You mm. know, he's mm. he, the wife, the girlfriend, or whatever. Mm. He's always moving with this cowboy, who this little boys, who piso and the mm. bakshi. They're mm. always moving together. Mm. They're like, you see, those are characters of being what? Mm. Gay. Mm. And it kind of drove me crazy. Mm. Like for real, it really drove me so crazy. Because you're a young man in your twenties at uh, the time, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, my 20s, like 23, mm. it really drove me crazy. I was like, what am I doing? Is it a crime? Mm. You get, so he want me to go on TV and you, mm. yeah, you say, I, because I'm a TV presenter. Mm. But I had protection of my workspace, mm -hmm. like uh, our bosses and whatever they say, no. Mm. We cannot allow that. Mm. You get mm. it? Mm. We cannot, because even we had a big fight. Mm. Even some of them, I'm like, okay, if you want me to prove, I will mm. not go on TV. You bring your wives. 
<laughs> they will tell you the story. <laughs> they will come and be my my what? Mm, my witness. witnesses. Mm. And so it was more scaffold. But mm. and that has followed me up to now mm. because mm. in most times the kind of work we do, mm. they might think that we are the senior recruiters mm. of young people into mm. homosexuality, which mm. is not even true. Mm. You get, we follow the policies and we follow the laws of mm. this country. Mm -hmm. You get it, mm. and also the kind of work we do. You find that the same, let's say, partner or founder that is supporting Rahu is the same partner that is supporting me, means of health, means of education. Mm, mm. At the end of the day, it becomes mm. more of a business care. Yeah. You get it. But mm. you cannot tell if someone is, like someone, like uh, first see the track record. Mm. What have we done? Mm. P do we have so many people at Richard mm. that they work there. Mm. Some of them, by they come with that mentality. Mm. But when they work there, they're like, okay, things are different from mm. what we hear. Mm. You get it. So, mm. That is something that we never take away because people have to think differently. Yeah. yeah. Does it impact on your family? Uh, yeah, it has. Mm. It, it really, mm. it has. It How did your siblings and people in your family? No, my family. I like. Let's say I have my. Well, I have one brother in this in, in Kampala. Mm -hmm. uh, is the and then the rest are in the village. The mm. others are in the UK. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, for them, they understood. Like they mm. know me, mm -mm. they yeah. understand. Me. You're their family member. You're and their blood. They're family member. Mm. I'm their blood. Mm. So, whatever that is said, in most cases, even they never bring it on the table mm. because they know the truth. Yeah, you know, and and, and it didn't really bring a lot of impact, mm. let's say, to mm. to my family. Though at the beginning, mm. it did. It kind of It kind of shook, it kinda shook them mm. of like maybe. You know, gay people were giving me money and mm. all that, which mm. was not even true because mm. that was the scenario that was really created. Mm. Mm. You get, but also even if I'm in this movement, mm. sometimes I would really advocate on how they behave because mm. they are the cause of all this. Mm. You get it, like mm. you're throwing parties, mm. they're all over social media, mm. you're doing this. I mean, we all throw parties, but there's a way that you have to carve it down. You get mm. it, because you project that everyone, it's like Illuminati kind of movement. Yeah. Everyone who wanted to be rich would mm. be. Mm. You say, I would love to be an illuminator. I would right. love to do this. So there was richness as well tagged, mm, associated, associated mm. to homosexuality, mm. which was not even true. Mm. Like everyone is normal, everyone mm. is okay, everyone, mm. everyone is also in their own hustle. What mm. is different is about their orientation. Mm. You get it. So, mm. for instance, you say, you know what? We have to serve mm. the young people. Yeah. And that's our mission. Yeah. We don't care about any mm. orientation that mm. you are, mm. but we empower you. Mm. We give you the proper and right services yeah. that you need. Yeah. You get it. So yeah. that's what we do. Mm. Mm. So that's how. Those are some of the challenges mm. we had. Mm. Whereby you do like school camps, they think that you're teaching young people how to have sex. Mm. In some schools, even where I was prayed for as a devil worshiper. Wow. Okay, because casting uh, out demons. Yeah, you're, mm. you're doing outreaches, you're moving with people like Wembley and their hairstyle, they're mm. like, now you've got Saturday dance. Mm. You get mm -hmm. it? Mm. So you're an agent. Mm. You get it? Mm. Now you see, we have heard about you, mm. how you're recruiting our boys into opposite. Which doesn't even make sense. Mm. Mm. So those are some of the challenges that we yeah. have encountered beyond yeah. other things that <coughs> we are the frontliners, mm. but also we don't have enough backing for CSOs that protect us. Mm. There's and in, in Uganda, it's particularly dicey, right? Yeah. In Uganda, it is particularly dicey. Dicey. What the you situation mean? is, the, the 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 environment, both socially and politically, is not friendly. Yes, no friendly. Yeah. You get it. Mm. So even the CSOs is like everyone runs to protect their job. Mm. Yeah. Not to be closed. Yeah. But no one boldly really comes out mm -hmm. and say, you know what, this is what we stand for. Mm. This is what we're doing. Mm. This whatever. You get it. So. Mm. Mm. There's still lack of that, mm. Mm. and because of lack of that, mm -hmm. most of the CSOs that we're having mm. that are big uh, mm. international organizations mm. that have to protect their own agendas. Yeah. Now, for us that are locally led, mm. we face a lot of challenges mm. because we feel like we want to fight, mm. we want to put on a case, we want mm. to do this, but mm. but we shall get there. There is once, sometime in the course of the week, I heard you mention once youth led now. Um, youth serving. Youth serving. Yeah. Um, how the transition now? I mean, you started this when you were in your early twenties. Obviously, uh, after twenty-four, we get into another bracket of youth, and mm. maybe now you're getting outside of the bracket of the the, 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 the youth completely. Mm. But in those, in that journey, how? What are your reflections of how 
you know how you are even accepted and how you like obviously when you're younger there is less experience as you continue to grow you're expanding your experience yeah. as you've shared you're doing more things more brave more bold things yeah. um but W- what is your reflection around especially the, f- the the entire issue of founding and and and, and moving along with um, now, with an organization when you see in this space right now most mm-hmm. of the vibrant youth led organizations have died out yeah especially maybe those that we started with back before mm-hmm. because once you st- let's say as a youth led you're attractive mm men but for a season but for a season yeah you're in the good graces you're of the, the good donors graces of the for, donors for just a while until you understand that yeah you're not starting up a charity organization yep you're running a business yes and once and you, wh- why I mean, are, why send are you that louder to the people yes. at the back because it is a time some yeah it's very hard for people to initially we want the passion yes yeah and you see because they're traditional tradition the donors they say youth led they're going to invite you to every conference to speak yeah they're going front as their examples mm. and this we're talking about ngos you'll be the poster child for a, for, a, for a two three years yeah, and that's so it. I'm, I'm coming to that mm. so mm. you're there mm. you youth led mm. and you're in their proposals all the time because mm. you're going to they're going to win money because you're there yeah now you transition from being a youth led mm-hmm. Now you're growing. So when they're growing, they start bringing conversations yeah. of uh, what's your, uh, what is it called? A value proposition. No, 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 value proposition. Mm. They have uh, these discussions. What's your, is it transitional plan? or Sustainability. Su- no, sustainability. Oh, your transitional plan out of leadership. Out of, uh, out of yeah. leadership. Yeah, yeah. I get you. Then mm. I ask them, did you start up this business for me? <laughs> it's a social impact business that I'm mm. running. Mm. If you don't understand that, yeah. then I'm sorry. Yeah. Then I ask them another question. Mm. You have insurance, you have a job security. Mm. Do I have any? Yeah. Okay, I mm. just want to be as much realistic mm. as possible. Mm. Another question. Um, as a CEO, I think I'll transition. Mm. But as the founder, I don't think I'm going to transition from yeah. that role because this is my vision, it's my legacy mm. that I am building. Mm. And there's so much mm. that hasn't been done yet. Yes. That's that you envision. That, I'm, uh, that I envision mm. Mm. to do. Mm. And then I'm like, but I'm also in business with you. Yeah. Because the more I do my work, the more you be sustained. That's true. Do you understand? That's that? true. The more your reports are looking good and yeah. nice. Mm. You get it? So mm. if you're saying what is my uh, transitional plan to another, for you transition from your job to another job, mm. either another organization hires you because mm. of expertise and whatever, yeah. But the same question I don't think was even asked to the founder of this organization that you're working mm, for. Mm. You get it? Mm. Because they still want a young person. Mm. But also remember, you've grown up an organization from 40,000. It's built out of passion, out of commitment. Yeah. You get it? Mm. And there's so much sacrifice that you make that you don't even want to tell people. Mm. And you can never and even you can, fully share. You can never even describe it. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And, and, and and also, one of the things is that it is now, it's a new budget before as 50, it has gone to 100, now it's in millions. Mm. Now you want a young person, yeah, who has no experience now to manage millions, to mm. take us back to 50,000. Mm. You get it. Mm. This is a growing social mm. impact mm. business. Mm. If let's say we are 60 years and we are still there, we sh- shall also look at issues of elderly. Yeah. You get it. Mm. That's why in Richer Hand, we are more diverse. Mm. Our core will always be young people. Mm. And that's what we're looking at. Mm. And our transition helps us now to create more of these young people that are doing amazing stuff. Yeah, everywhere. In the room, we have so much youth-led leaders yeah. of their grassroots organizations mm. who are from the Pietkeras Academy. Mm. And that's what we're doing. Mm. Mm. You get it. When I was starting up Richer Hand, I knew I'll never stay young. I have to grow. Yeah, so I started to. thinking ahead. Yeah. What more can we do at that time? Yeah. You get it? Mm. And also the time that you understand. Mm. So now the challenge comes whereby mm. you've been a youth led, you're attractive. Yeah. Now they start cutting you off. Yep. You get it? Those who have been funding you, even they start now throwing you some funny, funny audits. Yeah. That exactly. doesn't make sense. Yeah. You get it? Mm. So then after that, even your partners, you've been working very well here closely in Uganda, they start looking at you badly. 
because at the same time you've reached at the same table now to compete for the same money. Mm. You get so it? You're a now the, the 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 rich person who has been giving you money to give him is like, but why don't I give it to him directly? Mm. So you become a threat. Mm. So many people are now seeing us competition than mm. seeing us as complementers. Mm. Mm. So and that's a big challenge. And how do you handle that? We continue doing good work. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, mm. I mean, like that's it. I'm going to yeah. be here. And I'm always going to be here. Yeah. With or without money, I'm mm. going to be here. With mm. or without funders, mm. we're going to be there. Mm. They pass. Mm. That's why we're diversifying into movie production, yeah. into into sustainable business programs mm. that are going to help our business continue. Mm. You get it. Speaking of now, you have, and I know there's a lot in between, so I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to skip that. So two things before you even speak about the evolution of the programs and the evolution of the um, pathways mm. that um, that Richard Hand has. We left at a point where in your story you were at Makere. Yeah. Yeah. So do you finish Makere? <laughs> so I finished Makere uh -huh. last year. I graduated mm -hmm. in 2014. Mm -hmm. I was very happy. A degree was very important in my family because yeah. my degree is the first one in my family. Oh, wow. Of yeah. your father's children? No, my mother's children. Okay. And father. Mm, you mm, get it. Mm. My degree is the first mm, yeah. uh, to be brought in home. We mm -hmm. celebrated it oh, like that's never really before. Nice. Mm. Um, that time also Richard had got some money. Yeah. Uh, so we started like employing people, mm -hmm. like we started about like six employees. Yeah. Uh, a Humphrey organization, like Humphrey, you know, funders have, have man, I fought a lot of politics. Mm. You get it, like um, mm. a lot of, there's so much politics in CSOs, mm, like it it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You get, leave alone business whereby you go and compete for a job and yeah. you know, yeah. I'm going to betray this guy to get money. Mm. But the other side, there's mm. hypocrisy, there's, mm. there's quite a lot. Mm. But you learn that mm. along the way. You mm. learn how to play the game. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, we now the organization start growing, going into proper transition mm -hmm. and proper system building mm -hmm. till up to date. Mm -hmm. But now we have about 68, actually, to about 70 employees, mm. and we're still growing. Mm. You mm. know, we have established programs that are more sustainable. Mm. We're now building up a health facility mm -hmm. in uh, the Western region that we're going to launch very soon to mm. provide like quality health services. Mm. Our programming has evolved, mm. you know, to be youth focused, but also to have integrational partnerships. Mm. You know that uh, that we merge together. Mm. Uh, so from 2014, I think life has never been the same. Mm. We kept mm. growing. Mm. I kept growing. Mm. I kept getting more experience. Mm. I was nominated for the MTV uh, MTV Best mm. Leadership, the Mamas mm -hmm. uh, Leadership Award mm -hmm. in 2014. Mm. Uh, in 2013, I got the Young Achievers Award. Mm. That later, even I organized awards themselves. Mm. I started launching Sugar MTV Sugar in Uganda. In Uganda, yeah. you know, and also that I'm like, no, we need to tell our Ugandan stories, mm. Mm. and that's how we invented Chadala, mm. the TV, the TV mm. series, mm. now showing on Power Magic. Yeah. Um, now we are into movie productions, mm -hmm. so we do a lot of social impact stories, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of uh, put them into movie production. Mm -hmm. So I lobby for that section as well, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so the evolution has been there. And to the point where it was last year. Yeah. No, first of all, how do you go through COVID? As um, COVID was. I, a I know you are skipping from like 2016, and there are many yeah. things, but um, for you, for your colleagues for your family for your children for your um for the work that you do no one expected that there would be covid yeah how does it hit you <laughs> i'd sell some money and built a house okay i had to sell it wow so that we can cover all the gaps mm. i didn't want to let anyone go mm. I, I i was locked up for example in the u.s mm. um you are um, yeah. When, 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 when it was being when, announced? Yes, when it was announced, I'd gone to the US to mm -hmm. lobby and all mm -hmm. that, I got locked. So Jan, Feb, March 23rd? Yes, mm -hmm. so I got locked up there. Mm. And when I got locked up there, I had to look for survival mode because mm. I had my family to take care of. Mm. I have had also my other bigger family that also looks after, uh, mm. look, look, look out for me. Mm. I couldn't depend on which I had. Mm. And uh, also now, remember that projects are also put on a standstill. Mm -hmm. Know that all our salaries are paid, you know, on project basis. Mm. We, we do a lot of uh, in country <coughs> loan <coughs> and uh, marketing our program so that we can have sponsors come on board, mm. and that's how we are able to get more keep salaries for, and also keep the work going. Mm. All that was on a standstill. Mm. 
So I made a decision. I'm mm. like, you know what? There's a goodwill person who looked at the house and said, I think I like it. And my 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 my, my idea was when I come back, mm. we can enter into our what? Our mm. new house. Mm. You get it. Mm. So I had to sell it. After selling it, I maintained our salaries at at, at work. Mm. At least uh, we did a lot of uh, COVID programming mm-hmm. and whatever. Like we find the business, mm. you get it. Mm. And, and and in the US, how I was doing as more of a florist, mm. like delivering flowers and mm. whatever. And also, I'll get like about, that was three years ago. Uh, yeah, 2020. Mm. Mm. And I would get about like $500 a week, mm. you know, because most people were fearing to do that kind of work. Mm. So I mean, I would put mm. on protective gears and one. then I mm. and I go and. Uh, and also we had that mentality that COVID is not for Africans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're strong. And then I'm coughing. <laughs> Look at so, that. <laughs> that's how it was. Uh, but it was a really tough one. Mm. Very tough one. And uh, after that, our business was really shaken. Mm. Uh, that's when we get into now a transition. Mm-hmm. Um, and also things were not really good. By transition, like, what do you mean? Transition in terms of now restructuring up the organization yeah. Yeah. and all mm-hmm. that. Mm. Then in 2021, we got a very big hit mm. as an organization, mm-hmm. whereby our major funders dropped off mm. were on the government radar, you know, when wow. they closed the 50 organizations and all that, mm. we were part of that radar. Mm. We faced some ruckus there. Mm. Um, there were some investigations going on that even threatened our staff. They did a, a, like a raid at office, mm. took most of all our documents and mm. whatever. Mm. So that really put What are they looking the for as the government? Among CSOs? No, so what they say is that we're funding opposition, uh-huh. which has never even happened. Right, so the national politics are beginning National to politics as well, because mm. Richard Ham, you have a very huge youth network yeah. Yeah. of young people. Yeah. So how do you sustain them? Mm. Also, how do you sustain yourself in COVID mm. when others are not working mm-hmm. for your business shouting, sexuality, mm. what, what, mm. what? Mm. And also rumors that uh, some potential parents are kind of complaining mm. that we are into recruitment of young uh, people into homosexuality. Mm. You know, and so many other things like mm. that. Our programming, who are donors, mm. and so many things like mm-hmm. that. And that even ended up me, like, going to handcuffs and taken to a police station mm. for questioning and mm. so many things like that, mm. on which even some of those things are still there. Mm. So that made us, you know, uh, lose some potential donors that mm. were getting to a renewal. Mm-hmm that also kind of brought our finances down. Mm. Uh, most of our staff members left, mm. went to other opportunities because mm. we couldn't sustain them. Yeah. And then we, we had a promise and hope that we're going to regain back. Mm. That's why it's a business that we're running. Mm. And uh, so we started recouping back so mm. even slowly. Mm. In, in fact, those that stayed with us were so much slow at what we're doing and mm. they believed in us. Mm. And then, yeah, we got back to our feet. Mm. And then here we are. As an individual, has has this work come with your own like what are some of the psychological psychosocial emotional mental challenges that your journey has come up with i, I remember yeah. at some point you mentioned early <coughs> you know in your early childhood and in your early teenage that was you know when you would break down and when you see but the toughness about life that did it end there mm-hmm. it has continued with you for this many years as you reflect especially in your career um, how have you been able to, or not, <laughs> yeah. uh, remain, you know, um, remain intact? It has affected me mm-hmm. as well, whereby you have to live an angel life. Mm. But you're a human being as well, mm. who's not perfect. Yeah. And uh, there's a different way people look at you. Mm. But there's so much I miss as a childhood because I was taking life too serious. Mm. Uh, you know, I didn't do like house parties, mm. like enjoy my friends, go out most often, yeah. whatever. Because mm. I used to focus so much on building up a legacy, which mm. it has really paid off mm. and is still paying off. Mm. Um, I might say that uh, I'm trying to be a very good father to my children because mm. I don't stay with them often. Mm. Uh, but also that comes with a very huge sacrifice mm. that you make. Mm. Um, like my personal life has it has not gone as planned mm. the way I should really plan it mm-hmm. and so many things that I wouldn't love to talk about here mm. but that I feel like uh, I love my work too much mm. I'm so married to it mm. 
but also I have to sacrifice a few things mm. that mm. I might not be able to sustain right now in mm. my life mm. because of so many things that they really come with and so many responsibilities. Mm. So it's the whole thing whereby you cannot have a cake and eat it and all. Eat it too. Yeah, so, mm. and uh, I've tried to manage my, myself. Mm. And it's more of a uh, lots of temptations that you face mm. that you have to keep skipping all mm -hmm. the time and, mm -hmm. and maybe praying about them. Mm. Uh, it, it comes with that. It comes with, of course, people become so much envy. Mm. You have a friend that is so much into you, but mm. you end up being betrayed. Mm. And uh, and that has been a very big hit onto my on, onto my life. Mm. Uh, but all in all, like for me, every challenge that comes, mm. it comes like an opportunity. Mm. So I try to see if this challenge I'm facing it right now, mm. what opportunity can I get out of it? Yeah. So that has always been my my step forward. Mm. Yeah, in life. But mm. challenges are quite very yeah. many. Yeah. Um, and do you have like a surround system um, or like a support system around you that... Um, I, yeah, I, as a, I quite have very many people that I talk to. Mm, mm. People that are good in business, mm. people that are big CEOs, mm. people that have run. I, I, I'm one person who doesn't think I know it all. Yeah. I'm one person that has to keep seeking for knowledge, mm. for support. Mm. Even if I think I know something, I'd rather ask. Yeah. And this is a spirit as well that I've put in my team. Mm. I consult them. Yeah. I'm not, they're my bosses. I'm not their bosses. Yeah. I even <coughs> tell everyone that they're employers of their own job. Mm. So I'm talking to my fellow employers. Mm. So I'm going to consult on how can we do something mm. better. Mm. I like that uh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I'm mm. one person that even if, um, even if let's say, um, let me say that uh, I'll want to buy that camera, I'd mm. rather ask you. Mm. So I'm not going to say I'm going to buy the, here yeah. the gadget to use. I would yeah. love mm. to give you a gadget that you're really comfortable mm. with. Because mm. so, we are in a partnership mm. all together. Mm. Mm. And what is bringing us together is rich at heart. Mm. So that I consult a lot. Mm. I, learn, mm. I learn a lot. I mm. socialize mm. quite a lot mm. to mm. learn, yeah. not to have fun. And, and people around me are people that are going to be talking about work. Mm. Yeah, often, no, yeah. No, no, mm. often. Not mm. talking about football mm. or, or girls. Mm. Or, you mm. know, let's talk mm. about let's talk on how we can make mm. each other better. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So as we as we now try and conclude this, you coming from that boy whose mom passed on, yeah. you know, when you are barely man, barely a year old, to going through the life that you've gone through. Yeah. If at that very broken stage where you're facing all the stigma, where you're, um, you know, you're, you're not even sure whether life will make it. You're trying to make a decision about do I, what do I do? If you look at your seven-year-old self, mm. what would you tell him? <laughs> <coughs> you see, eh? when you've hustled from life to make it, mm. And uh, what you used to blame yourself when you're a child, and you see it was an opportunity to, for you to be who you are, mm. is to tell my seven year old self that whatever you're going through is a lesson for yeah. you to handle the future lesson. Yeah. yeah. When I'm 50 years, mm. I'm going to tell my 30 year old self right now that mm. whatever I'm going through is preparing me for to that. For that. Yeah. So I stop blaming myself. Mm. I stop blaming people around mm. me. Because. I have to be even happy that God shows me who you are yeah. at a very early age, that yeah. Him showing you who you are when I'm 50 years, when That's I don't true. even have energy mm. to get out of this. Mm. So I would tell Him not to blame mm. anyone. That mm. is, even if, let's say, they have bad hearts towards you, mm -hmm. there's some good mm. they are teaching you mm. in every condition that you're going through. Absolutely. Yeah. And. I believe in future thinking and futures, yeah. creating futures. Yeah. If you are about to exit the youth bucket, yes. <laughs> as you imagine yourself 35 years later, mm. where is Humphrey and what What do you also tell you? 35 him? years later, still I'll be a founder of Richard Hunt mm -hmm. and I'll be doing a lot of lobbying for Rahul. Mm -hmm. I'll move with my generation and I'll continue empowering them. Mm -hmm. 
35 that they will be like about 65 yeah. also they will be having sexual reproductive health challenges <laughs> a different kind and of different kind. Yeah, <laughs> they will be dealing with their yeah. sexual erectile dysfunction and other things dis dysfunction <laughs> yeah. they'll be dying of heart diseases yeah. and yeah. due to uh, sleeping with young girls so I'll be able <laughs> to talk about uh, cross generational sex mm. you know yeah uh, I'll be able to promote peace and love, mm. um, you know. So, uh, and also we would have created a legacy. We would want to institutionalize our peer carers academy to be an institute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm. also at that time, we mm. believe we shall still. Mm. Uh, uh, we are having a, a, a clinic that we are building, yeah. and now it's on completion, and mm. we're launching it in April or mm -hmm. May. Mm. And we want to establish ten of them yeah. across the country. Across the country. Mm. So we have to make sure that that legacy stays. Mm. We have to make sure that our grandchildren or our children mm. are able to see what we have created and yeah. they are able to continue sustaining mm. it. Mm. Um, we have our film industry, mm. whereby even if you're 100 years, you can still act. Yeah. Yeah, you can There's still co produce. Mm. So that's our sustainability plan. Mm. Well, now we can go the film industry. Mm. And with our Saudi Plus Media Hub business, mm. we have invented, like for example, the Icon Awards, mm -hmm. which are into film and television. Mm. We are doing more productions. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be having. Uh, we are starting up Saudi TV, mm. which is uh, mainly such content should mm. be on that platform. Mm -hmm. So, at that time, I know that internet access will be for all, mm. and we shall be also into creating content. Yeah. You know, um, so the vision is bigger. Mm. I mean, the train is going to move mm. until until. Mm. So I like that. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I like you. I, I'd like to give you the honors to yeah. do two things at the end, so I won't speak again. One is if, um, as you have just reflected on your on your journey, who, whom do you think from this region should I? I'll, I'll, and it's a, it's a country I'll be coming to a number of times, should sit and do this, should sit and tell their stories because you know mm. of people, your peers, elders, younger people, um, two or three names that you think should have their story told, amplified, and, and really gotten. And then in conclusion also, conclude in the way you would like to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In this region, in Uganda? In Uganda, in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Uganda, I'm also inspired by, by some very good social entrepreneurs that mm -hmm. have really hustled their way up. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, of course, Moses, Moses Mulumba, yes. Sehad, mm -hmm. yes, he's doing it and he's creating a very good inspiration. He's mm -hmm. one guy that people should really also know his story and mm -hmm. how he has come. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, another lady, she's called Monica. Uh, she's uh, an executive director of Gallup. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gallup Initiative. Yeah. Uh, there's also my good friend, also stroke mentor, who's called Jackson Kaguri. Mm -hmm. He's the founder of Nyaka AIDS Foundation, mm. and uh, he's, do, he's done an amazing, mm. an amazing job mm -hmm. as well. Mm. And they have very strong, powerful stories. Mm -hmm. And and also these are social entrepreneurs that have been pushed for something. Mm. You know, they have seen exactly. needs. They have grown up in situations. Yep. And they've, they've got an opportunity and they feel like, no, we should do something about mm. it. Uh, so there are very many that yeah. can uh, tell their stories. Also, when you come into the private industry, mm. you know, there are very many that I feel. Mm. Then, but now in conclusion, mm -hmm. um, I just want to really thank you for this platform. It's quite a very interesting platform that also maybe we should really think about mm. in terms of bringing people tell their stories because mm. it's a movie on its own. Mm. Mm. And I uh, just want to conclude by, you know, talking to the viewers that uh, we are open mm. uh, to partner with everyone that wants to partner with us at Richer Hand Uganda. You mm -hmm. can follow us on our social media mm. accounts on Instagram, TikTok, um, uh, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. You can follow us and join us. And yeah, let's keep motivated. Please mm. always support that person with an idea don't throw them away absolutely you know i've been rejected so many times mm. but i never regret why any time i was rejected mm. any rejection that you face mm. as a person just know it should be a motivation for you to work mm. hard mm. because that person who rejects you don't even hate them love them mm. continue even going to them engaging them mm. because tomorrow are the same people that are going to invest in your work mm. so rejection comes with you working hard to be hard mm. and also let's stop being entitled yeah. we have very many we have grown up a society that is more entitled. Mm. 
entitlement brings uh, arrogancy, mm. it brings ignorance, mm. it, it brings lack of humility. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you never, you never, you never know what this world really brings for you. Absolutely. And everyone should know that we are in this world to really contribute mm. to this world, not mm. to take things away from it. Yeah. Yeah. So we are not entitled to mm. it, but we are mm. meant to provide and mm. protect it mm. and contribute what we have found. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. that's what I have. Absolutely. To say. Yeah. Really. Thank you, Humphrey. Uh, this has been Development Dynamics with Maxi from Kampala, Uganda. We'll be right back. <laughs>